I want to clear up a um, a topic that I brought up in the last recording, which I did not properly attend to and sort of cover. Um, uh, I I touched on it in in a in a very um, incomplete way, and I don't want that to be taken out of context. So I'd rather just give my full view on it um, now. And I was talking about. Uh, kind of fascism as a uh, uh, as being modeled off of a, a certain kind of immaturity in terms of a psychological schema which then sort of um, you know uh, so in some sense there's something of a kind of of a fascist inclination within people and then there's a kind of a cemented fascist culture or even potentially subcultures that exist that exhibit various degrees of fascistic kind of propensity or or attitude. Uh, now this is this is a very very broad topic, and I'm not going to comprehensively deal with all the various permutations, but I'm going to sort of at least cover the 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 main important things that need to be said on this kind of topic. So I was trying. Uh, um, in the last recording, I, I was trying to talk about a kind of a healthy culture. How does a healthy culture sort of absorb the, the, the otherwise the, the quite pathological and toxic propensity within this particular ideological um, schema or the, the psychological schema? And so what I was trying, because uh, this is a complex thing to say, and I didn't want to see pro-fascist, but I, I was just trying to say that in a healthy culture, uh, in, a, in a culture that is doing the best that, that, that culture for what it is can do for people, um, is actually going to be one uh, that is permissive of the elements that make up uh, fascist thinking on the individual scale, but are, let's say, able to suppress fascist culture on a macro scale. Because you cannot simply, um, you cannot tear it from people as a viable opportunity to sort of to think out or to live within or something like that. You have to actually let people have develop their own thinking and, and mature. You know, so you can't abolish it as a thing. You know, the only way you're going to abolish it is by forcing people to sort of. Um, anyway, uh, I, I'm going to get into sort of some practical and almost ironic um, ways in in how this interfaces with with at least the current culture as well. Um, to sort of to, to, to more elaborately go into this, so. So. I was trying to say that in a in a in a healthy society, most individuals will almost invariably have some level of what would be in in some similar kind close to a kind of fascist a fascistic schema, but because it wasn't cemented or um, into a, a kind of uh, Into a into a pervasive moral code, because it was contended on the level of the individual, it doesn't get into the what what would generally be regarded as fascism. It doesn't operate as fascism would operate. So you've got these kind of these um, individual despots, you know. Which I mean, you know, you can imagine this is what people are mostly like. People like things their way. They perhaps are not that open to compromise and negotiation. You know, this is almost the, the lowest common denominator in people. You know, this is the general view that, that people must have when they stereotype what what any collective is going to be like, what any society, what any, um, you know, kind of, you know, one, one can hope to um, engage with people and, and, and make communication so as to try to bridge divides but at some point um you know you realize that there are a lot of people that are languishing in these kinds of self involved um anyway i'm not going to get into that tangent too much okay so uh 
Uh, this is not to be cynical. Uh, this is just to, to sort of have one's eyes open as to... Um, now, there, obviously, there are various reasons why people aren't willing to kind of negotiate um, and, and be willing to, to be open to persuasion you know, the kind of vulnerability, susceptibility, the, the kind of humility that is needed to do that is just not culturally prized. Well, I mean, you need it to be culturally sort of sanctified in some way so as to not have a kind of toxin that eventually builds up and takes over, which is what we have in our current society. Um, sorry, these are not, this is not actually how I wanted to present uh, some of this content, but um, let me just try find some of... Uh, And so generally what you want people to be able to do, and I'm sort of imagining people in like public schools around the ages of 12, you want them to come up with their juvenile thinking. You want them to be able to dress themselves as they so wish in their psychological schema, exploring, discovering. And then when they, are, when they put on the kind of the fascistic shirt, and I, this is a complete metaphor, and I mean this in terms of in their way of thinking, then you want them to be able to be dressed down by somebody else on an individual to individual basis. You cannot dress someone down by appealing to some kind of moral majority or compelling, uh, appealing to some kind of consensus moral orthodoxy that they're not conforming with. You know, that, that is completely antithetical. It's not going to work. In fact, that's going to, in fact, allow because essentially that is the way of thinking that they are um, entrenched in that everyone should be just should adopt their identity schema everyone should just be coded into their way of thinking and then they would be correct and certain what, what is very ironic is that all the identity politics people they are the proponents of fascistic values they are the they are the contagion they are the, the you know this is why hitler would have called them useful idiots because they are the, um, in principle, they are intrinsically fascistic. Uh, um, they have the, uh, okay, I, I was going to get into a discussion of subculture. That in some ways, then you can also have fascistic subcultures, although I would like to try and, and divide these into sort of two general groupings where you would have some subcultures which are, which are in some very vague sense fascistic in how, uh, but, but it's, it's, it's not really that toxic or pathological because essentially they are trying to make a specialist claim. And so they are essentially saying, uh, your opinion does not count until you sort of, uh, adopt our vocabulary or something like that and you and you sort of you learn about our expertise and so it's a kind of like um uh yeah you, you know some of these distinctions can can sort of uh it, it's problematic to try and formalize these categories too much because labeling i mean the fascistic mentality because it's so obsessed with identity is capable of, of sort of just sort of reframing and contextualizing any set of language to make its ideological presumptions, the kind of the, 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 um, uh, the core reality that everything is, is sort of modeled, um, within, uh, you know, this is why they have such a positivistic obsession, uh, because the idea is, is that they can generate uh, a system of regulation and and uh, um, and formality which will essentially displace um, individual discerning of ethical principles. They essentially want to abolish ethics and just have a moral code. And uh, it's, this is tremendously frightening, you know, when when you see how they have um, basically corrupted the education system and how they are corrupting the youth. Um, with this form of thinking that the idea is, is that, um, there is only this kind of 
subconscious moral majority consensus that has to kind of uh, be pervasively plugged into and that will sort of be invoked and so you have this kind of this very autistic narcissistic sense of identity uh, which is so intrinsically protected and insulated um, Uh, yeah. That it's not sensitive to its own ability to be dressed down. It's not, it's not capable of, because it, it says, I'm not dressed down, I'm naked, I am, this is the natural being, you know, um, anyway, uh, so, uh, just as a kind of historical aside, we basically, we had the right culture in the 90s. Um, but essentially, uh, because of strange moral thinking, we allowed a kind of black racism to go by the boards and to just sort of, um, uh, to be acceptable. And, you know, that has really sort of, confuddled and and dismantled any kind of of sort of ethical moral framework um that can be uh, used in in a shared secular society so so we don't have a secular society we essentially have the makings of a um of a kind of fascistic hotbed where everything is just expected to um you know, where all power and influence and, you know, it, it is, and all these companies uh, uh, that you hear stories about, like YouTube and Facebook and such, um, uh, and Twitter sort of playing this, this very convoluted ideological, you know, unprincipled, um, preservation of the cognitive dissonance that is created by this very fragile um, way of thinking that essentially has to keep on developing this this nonsense principle of separate but equal identity you know you you have uh, I mean historically I would say that this does really boil down to gay pride because you cannot claim to have pride in being gay and also claim that being gay is normal those two claims do not fit together they do not fit with each other the claim that you can have pride in something that is normal that doesn't work so you have this very sort of dishonest use of language and this this very conscious kind of um vector of manipulation where where they will say, no, no, we're using pride in a defensive way. We're using pride to sort of to create uh, um, this idea that we have this pristine and inviolable sort of um, self-righteousness that needs to be respected and sort of imprinted on everyone's consciousness, that it has to sort of come to the fore. It has to um, be pervasively plugged into so that we're all on the same page, which really dissolves the idea of a kind of interpersonal, individual um, plane of culture. And so you've really kind of destroyed any alternative to the kind of, to the fascistic um, uh, uh, model of, of, of the public space and of the, um, you know, so essentially, uh, ideologically, they have already been able to uh, colonize the, 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 the public sphere. Um, and 
because it's such a convoluted system of of sort of tightly wound uh, uh, narrative spinning that that forces this kind of dichotomy of guilt and innocence that you can't do anything to slow it down because then you're on the wrong side you you are um endorsing the structural oppression and uh you know, and I've also tried to debunk the concept of structural oppression uh, as, as a completely ill-framed conduit for any kind of supposed progress. I mean, if you if you try to fix structural oppression, you're essentially, uh, I mean, you are a racist. I mean, like, you, you can't not be a racist. You can't not be in anything. I mean, the kind of, the obnoxious bigotry that is done in the name of combat combating structural oppression is uh, which is you know sort of excused by this hysterical um, claim for an immediate you know kind of uh, sympathetic compassion um, and, and then everything is just becomes this this currency of of, of sympathy um, and everything moves only because of its sympathetic interface with with that kind of zero sum thinking which has nothing no correlation with actually how financial stuff works with with how education works you know so this is this is the problem is that when you start trying to combat structural oppression you become anti-fiscal responsibility you become anti-education itself you have to sort of create these radically new interpreted you know nonsense um fanciful kind of mythologizing of racially lived experiences as a wellspring of of some kind of uh, uh, suppressed uh, uh, revolutionary, um, you know, economic miracle or something like that. You know, it, it's just it's complete fantasy and delusion. Um, and then you, you know, not only is it anti-education and anti-fiscal responsibility. You know, it, it believes that there's this sort of this this endless well of guilt to be exploited. Essentially, that there's this. Um, uh, that that will that will be the the kind of the fuel that, that drives the new system and the new order and and somehow you know if that fuel runs out well you know we can always just have a a, a selective genocide to 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 fill the coffers you know to, to to get the treasury working or something like that that's somehow there will always be blood to supply um this new vision this new radical you know um project uh now, to that's obviously the extreme case, but uh, uh, in some sense, this is already the moral equation in how the ideology functions. Um, I'm sorry, I just want to put the, oh, a, a, what what is m the most toxic element is that not only is it anti fiscal responsibility in education, but it's also anti independent thinking. It's anti individual principles and moral autonomy you only have moral autonomy in as much as you represent the source of moral consideration which is the identity that the identity is foremost and the individual is just a kind of is a layered composite of identity and that is how their rights are defined that is how their duties and obligations are 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 either suspended or or uh, administered or or provided by by the kind of the 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 savior of the system which is you know always some kind of concentration of power that will have a kind of corrupt well from procedural level it will be a corrupt hidden invisible you know kind of way of facilitating uh lip service to to, to the um to the correctness of of the ideological system uh, which is so fragile that it requires so much propaganda to keep itself um functioning uh but yeah so in in as much as that it completely corrodes the the idea of a kind of um
of an individual's autonomy to choose, you know, and to sort of, and to say, so what about identity and to do what they may do, to do what they, you know, and then obviously that doesn't mean that we don't have huge practical challenges, that there aren't people who need some kind of um, redress for justice. You know, that, that doesn't mean that justice doesn't only come in the form of, of addressing structural oppression. It doesn't come on the form of the collective. It comes in the form of the individual, not the individual as a X identity, as a whatever identity. Is, that's not the form that justice will ever take. And so it is only by that idea of justice, of individual justice and individual principles, that you are able to dress down an individual for wearing the kind of the identity matrix bullshit, you know, kind of oversimplified, convenient, um, you know, way of navigating life. So essentially they can just put everything into a dichotomy of essentially the knowledge of good and the knowledge of evil or, you know, of innocence and guilt. And then they can just sort of keep on just creating a more elaborate or sophisticated moral code to sort of keep that dichotomy alive, which essentially means that their, in, their, their personal accountability is just, you know, it just goes by the board. Um, they are only accountable to the, to the identity conceptual categorization system. Um, Anyway, uh, so, yeah, so I was going to, in a healthy culture, the elements of fascism are not, within the individual psyche, are not, I mean, there can be some understanding and knowledge generated about them. Um, there can be some, you know, general instruction, almost on a kind of, on a common sense level or something like that, you know, you, you can sort of try to demonstrate to people but what people think about demonstrations that are made for them for their educational edification is not um is not something that you can sort of command within people and if you try to do that ironically you will sort of um you will be exhibiting the thing that you're trying to immunize them from and generally you will create a kind of reaction uh, a kind of a reactionary escalation generally where people will uh, mirror the, the same tactic and to use it as a shield against you and to sort of kind of negate the agitation that you're generating. The only thing that cuts through that really is the concept of justice, but it has to be a kind of an understandable justice on the level of the individual, not on the level of identity. And as soon as you've got this kind of the social justice notion, as it has been defined by these racialists and and these disgusting identitarian people um you know you you you've already lost every kind you know you you are just now you you are just lost in the sea of being adopted by some kind of wave of being on the right side of history or whatever it may be um you know you've got a kind of you've got a runaway culture at that point um So I was going to also get into the kind of, into the difference between having the allowance for individuals to kind of have that despotic attitude, which I will also say that is what teenagers do. You know, teenagers almost invariably have the, at least will have some of a, this rebellious phase, as it were. When that rebellious phase gets sort of channeled into structural oppression that is joined in by a whole group of people that believe in conformity and that creates a kind of idea well i don't have to understand it it is well known it is widely acceptable you know it's just this kind of <clears throat> group think authority claim that you can just say well i have to just emotionally understand it because somebody else will be able to intellectually defend it you know the idea that you have these kinds of um I, i've uh, in some of my earlier recordings I, I spoke about you you have to understand for example the Ku Klux Klan is a, is a is obviously a fascist organization they have they and you have to look at the names that they give to the their office bearers that they have grand wizard dragons and and shit like that 
uh, this is the same function that is performed by their so-called academics, by their enlightened class, by their intelligentsia, by their kind of, um, that they have this kind of, this, the, they're mystically weaving this, myth, this mythology around the identity. They're, they're creating the space, the radical space, whatever, you know, the, however they, they want to hype it up, you know, it's, um, to create this idea that you sort of, you have this, um, external vision that you are being adopted by that you don't have to understand it because you're part of a kind of a collective destiny in that sense um and justice is essentially transformed into a kind of in, into an adjective instead of a principle um Okay, what I was trying to say is that then within like an actual um, fascist culture, then you, you have the leadership that you would hope at, at some level, at, at maybe not in, even in the middle level, but in the, in the very near the very, very top at least, and especially at the top, they will understand that it's all basically a Ponzi scheme, that it's all, uh, you know, uh, I mean, if they, if, if they're, they will at least have to be forced onto being on the fence if it's a Ponzi scheme or not. And they will have to try to deal with that self-doubt, probably by taking risks and by doing radical things. You know, um, Hitler attempted to have a coup, you know, basically twice. He won the second time, but the first time he was put into jail and, you know, he was so sympathetically treated because of his his vile ideology is, is so possessive just as the the ideology of Julius Malema is possessive, you know, um, in the South African context, he is a, fa a black fascist has won 10% of the votes in this country with the history of this country, you know, with the history of this country in terms of apartheid. I mean, it, it just shows you that uh, bigotry and, and blind hate and, and, you know, kind of the convenience of identity thinking you know, it, it has no boundary. It, it's not linked. It's, it's not, specific, you know, bigotry do, it does not belong to one group. Um, toxic thinking uh, is not reserved, you know, to a kind of, to a, a historical reduction. You know, people are in the present accountable and responsible for their, um, you know, and, and there is always that, that, you know, risk essentially um of making a situation worse of you know sort of buying into the the kind of the the hate mongering and allowing oneself to be deluded uh with convenient and oversimplified um infantilizing programs uh, that come at the cost of, of, you know, sort of rampant corruption that essentially will, will never, you know, you know, once people like that control the state, there, there is, um, well, that element within the ANC has even, you know, it, 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 it's still, you know, we don't know if South Africa is going to be able to recover. Um, our fiscus already essentially uh, probably beyond the point of no return and with with a, a continuing sort of encroachment and degradation of the kind of the institutional integrity um, of, of you know I mean the, the of the institutional integrity of the economy is you know incredibly um, under siege uh, I mean, this is why we don't have small and medium businesses. Um, too much discretionary power in the hands of administrators. Uh, we don't have the rule of law effectively um, in terms of how the policy and the business of government, um, how, the, how the legislation functions, you know, uh,
and, and the supposed affirmative action policy, which is essentially used to facilitate that, that uh, you know, it, it, is, it would, at some point, it will be very interesting to see, you know, I mean, you, you could do a forensic audit and, you know, at least some rough calculations of which policies have actually caused the damage to growth and to the arrestment of development and have been directly linked to, um, you know, getting money into uh, politicians' pockets, you know, and, and, and have been used to facilitate, essentially, um, Anyway, uh, what was I gonna say? oh, so I was just I was trying to get into the point of describing that that the 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 kind of I said that fascism was sort of ego focused. That is somewhat true and untrue. It it is trying to be ego focused. It doesn't actually end up succeeding at keeping the ego as a separate entity to the subconscious because it it. It, it, the only way it can do that essentially is by creating at least a two-tier system where it basically says, well, actually, we have, a, we have a justification for generating this fake culture that most of our population is going to languish in, that we have to have something that makes the plebs happy and that so that we, the, 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 the cream of the crop, can sort of can sit on top of the system and, and maximize things for the plebs. So we're almost doing it for them. But then at some point, that kind of, of uh, equation means that you, you can't end up valuing them and you have to value yourself more. But then that value is a kind of, is a private affair. It's a kind of, it's a, now in the kind of, in the useful idiot version, this is the function of relativism that the private sphere of almost being able to generate your own value by your mere imagination is is a kind of is a wonderful tool essentially is a, is a, is a, this kind of endless machine of of magic but what's stopping the magic from becoming apparent is that not everyone is in the same boat not everyone is sort of is has bought into it and that's why the magic isn't real yet that's what, because we don't have a hundred percent subscription yet so we have to force everyone in so the magic light switch kind of doesn't get uh, so we so so it's safe to cast the magic out in the open you know to use the my horrible mixed metaphor but it you see these things don't work because even if you did get 100% subscription the magic still wouldn't work so you would still have to like find some kind of blood sacrifice to excuse the fact that the magic is not as real as it was promised or something like that um and essentially in terms of of the leadership right uh, saying well you know obviously we have to keep on feeding them a kind of hyper realism uh, we have to keep on giving them propaganda and more and more interpretation um you know according to the idea that we we've been infiltrated that we've had our minds have been colonized that's why the magic isn't real uh we we're not enjoying that that relativism uh, that ha that has been um stolen from us uh, uh the, that was our birthright that was uh, that uh, that our lived experience has been eroded by by this uh poison you know um uh, that is structural oppression, however it's described. And so it's sort of the idea is, is that, um, okay, sorry, I keep on describing that. So the, the leader that knows that that is a ploy, the leader that, that essentially cynically knows that they don't, you know, they don't really buy their own rhetoric, but it's, it has to be functional for something, for a greater purpose, right? So, what can that purpose be if it's built on deception? You know, it has to be, well, it's for their own good, you know. Um, you know, you know, on some level you have to think, well, 
maybe they still have to also basically cling to the nonsense principle that they can maintain and they can try to promote this concept of separate but equal. So if they, if they say, yeah, yeah, well, if we're all just agreed to be separate but equal, uh, and this is how we administer our in-group, you know, there's no moral wrong because that's how everyone essentially does it. Or if they don't do it, they don't even realize that that is the game that they should be playing. Uh, sorry, I'm getting, I'm trying to work up to the point of, of showing that essentially, that means that essentially they are also subconscious focused. They're just subconscious focused in a kind of one tier higher. But they, they still end up, so in a, in a meta developmental way, they believe that they are ego focused relative to everything else, relative to the pleb um, culture. But their culture in being relative to the pleb culture is is just another it's like a, a matrix within a matrix in some sense and that private matrix is hopefully going to be able to well in according to them will hopefully be able to survive because it just takes so much time to just tend to the other matrix and to keep it functioning so it's kind of it becomes a bit of a juggling act and hopefully it is a juggling juggling act from their perspective because they need something to eff effectively um, conceal from themselves the, the effect that if that was done in a stable way, if that was if they got away with it, then they would actually have to. You know, they couldn't just say that, oh, yeah, I'm providing value because of this collateral support that I'm providing to the plebs, they would actually have to have some internal sense of integrity. And that doesn't work from relativism. And so essentially you have to, I don't know, make up some kind of claim of superiority or some kind of claim of fatalism, determinism, destiny, um, the authority, the moral authority that is linked with the divine, you know, so this is why essentially it does end up promulgating its own kind of occult, esoteric bullshit, you know. Um, obviously, that occult, esoteric stuff, you know, will end up being very sophisticated and convoluted. Um, will, in the same way, will model the same level of bullshit that exists in the in the pleb um, subconscious subconscious focus you know so it's just it's the same game being played at a higher level that is trying to just sort of believe that it is a um you know so, so the kind of the idea is is that you're sort of you're living in a tower of babel and that there are people in in um in the rooms above you that are closer to the truth you know it, it essentially this is um And the idea is that, well, you're in the tower, that it's your tower, you're just, you, you are on a different level, and there are different levels, and it goes all the way to the top. That, that is essentially the, the fascistic kind of, um, uh, that's abstractly speaking, that, that is the, the sort of, the structure of it. Um, Okay, I think I've gone on for long enough. Um, so, oh, let me think. Okay, so let me just talk about subcultures now. In this, in the, you, after having said that, I think I can use a bit of that as a mixed metaphor to to show how that they are subcultures that have elements of this that don't get into the same kind of toxic mess or something like that, which would be something like that they see themselves, right, as a kind of, as a specialist class, perhaps of intellectuals, perhaps of theoreticians or something like that, but they don't place themselves in constructing a Tower of Babel. They almost, they, they, they see themselves as being a kind of an underground Tower of Babel that doesn't go, it doesn't lead all the way to the top or to the bottom, but it's just the kind of it's just the 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 ground floor. It just it just supports the 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 ground that we all so it's sort of it 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 almost claims a kind of specialist exclusive um, purview, 
and that it sees itself as kind of foundational to something that already exists. And so it's a kind of, it's a kind of like undercover, uh, let's see, uh, in the, that's not a, such a convenient metaphor, but it's, it's a kind of like, um, it sees itself as almost sub basic. It just, it just sees itself as a kind of, as a fundamental concern, which most people don't care to really contend with. But, and so they're not going to, if, if you're just a normal person talking in your normal language, they're not interested in your opinion if you're not already sort of in their school, if you're not sort of, if you haven't been inducted or you're not engaged in the concerns that they are engaged with and with the configurations of issues that they like to sort of composite or such. Now, creating a subculture that's like that, um, even if it ends up becoming a kind of... Uh, a, a, a goose, uh, a goose chase, or what is it called, um, or you know, even if it ends up being intellectually hollow, that is almost a good practice in some way. That you have to, and teenagers do this to some degree as well. You have to create a model of everything on some level so that you can get more experience dealing with things. Right. So you have to create a kind of a miniature, low resolution reduction of things that are too far away from you that you won't get direct experience from, you have to find a way of sort of um, grappling with some of these things to have some general notions in your head, not as conclusive certainties, but at least as a kind of, as levers that you can later develop, you know, so you, you it, the beginnings of some thinking to sort of, okay, now, so generating that and wanting to kind of seal it off as a kind of as a foundation as a foundational claim that oh actually we're actually going to try to understand everything we're actually going to believe that actually we've got this hidden tunnel here and it actually leads into this foundational structure that is holding everything up having a subculture that essentially it's not even fascistic but it's almost it's fascistic in the divide in that it says no 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 we don't want to know your opinion you have to deal with the thinking that we've already generated but it you know, in some sense, it's open on some fundamental sense, uh, not perhaps in style, but in some fundamental sense, it's open to um, being dressed down, you know, to being refuted in its totality, potentially, uh, and such, um, because it doesn't make this huge generalized claim that it is, you know, sort of generating a Tower of Babel. Um, and so subcultures like that will generally be um, in some kind of real context. They will be trying to do something proactive. They will actually have a kind of a real purpose built into them. Not some kind of vague, nebulous, you know, kind of encompassing claim of some kind of complete, um, uh, you know, that they're going to sort of recreate the complete system you know, I mean, understanding something completely is not the same thing as uh, believing that you can uh, sort of generate a um, a control. A, you know, uh, you, you know, so you have to go where the discovery leads you, rather than being kind of morally vectored towards generating a very kind of intervening power over a complete system or something like that or I mean the, the problem with with identity politics uh, said another way slightly is that it's not even a body of knowledge it is a complete description and so in some way it is it is self-consistent but for a human being to try to use that system of of a kind of of a, of a notional thought a notional body it's completely illegitimate. It's not coherent for an individual to interface with. It's only coherent for, for collective entities, you know, so you have to believe in the primacy of, of collective entities. You have to believe that you are a representative of some superficial identifier um, that has a kind of historical mythology uh, woven all through everything. You know, you, 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 it, it, it immediately um, incepts you into the identity matrix. Um, 
Anyway, okay, now, now I, I definitely have said enough.